Okay, guys, I'm going to hit the on button this time. <laughs> Because I totally did a full half of my video, not realizing I hadn't turned the video on. <laughs> Hello everybody, Jan of Jan Hicks Creates here, coming at you with, you'd think by floss tube 120, I would have this figured out. <laughs> I really do, I promise. But, I guess now we've moved from rain to sunshine, so instead of it raining on me, and you, while we do the video, we have a little sunshine. It is... Tuesday, November 24th at 11.03 a.m. here in San Antonio. And welcome to my channel. This is a channel about stitching and knitting and life and friends and love. And I hope you enjoy your time here. I am glad you are here. I want to thank those of you who support me by buying me a coffee. I really do appreciate it. As one of you said, it's, it's kind of a nice way on any given video to reach out and show your love to me without the monthly membership that like Patreon has. Now, Buy Me A Coffee does have a monthly membership, but um, I'm perfectly happy with just doing it ad hoc. When you feel like it, when you've come across a video that you feel like you've gotten a, a lot out of, I am more than happy to help you. And I love the fact that you support me whenever you can. And of course, no obligation. I am doing this because of my love for cross stitch and sharing it with you. I updated my phone and the time for the video is now showing in red and it caught my eye. <laughs> but at least that's good because it means it's recording. Two thumbs up. All right, so what else do we have going on? Pictures at the beginning. I hope you like that little look at our new little camper. We did pick it up on Friday. Spent the weekend at a little um, RV park. Actually, it wasn't so little. Up in the Katy area of Houston. It was on a man-made lake with a fountain. So you had that sound of the water in the fountain. We were parked right on the lake. Um, Mike actually ended up with a pretty bad headache on Saturday. So Saturday, he slept and I stitched. <laughs> What's not the love? breeze coming through. It was just a nice relaxing weekend. We love our new little guy. Um, don't have a name for it yet. I should have a contest on here. Are you guys good at naming things? <laughs> should I trust you with that? I reserve the right to not choose. Pick one of your names. But anyway, um, we still have some tweaks to do to make it to, to maximize storage, there is quite a bit of storage considering the size of the thing. Um, and just to make it a little more comfortable for the way we want to use it. So anyways, I hope you like that little look into our little camper. Not a whole lot else going on. Um, American Thanksgiving is coming up on Thursday. Mike is going to have a long weekend. Um, I don't know whether he's taking tomorrow off, but he is taking Friday off. We're going to be getting a lot of little stuff done here. Um, we are going to Zoom with the boys on Thanksgiving, so that's going to be kind of fun. Um, but yeah, that's about all. Stitching stuff, though. We got a lot of stitching stuff going on. Big old pile of stuff of goodies to show you. I mentioned last week that I had some stuff that was coming in the mail. Big pile of stuff. Um, I wanted to let you know I did hear from Fat Quarter Shop. They did get in the Cosmo Floss, excuse me, for my thankful design. They created a pack for it, so that is now available. Again, that will be linked below. Um, it's six skeins of Cosmo, and the pot price, I think, is $5.98. You can get the PDF from them, as well as my own website. Um, but it is still a PDF regardless of where you get it from. So that will be, I'll be linked below. Um, it was a resounding yes for a whip parade. I don't think there's any one of you, at least those who commented, who said, oh no, don't do a whip parade, that's boring. Now, several of you did say, don't do it live. That just, that gets tedious. And I, I totally get that. Um, so there is an option to do a premiere, which means I, I record the video as usual and schedule it. And then the premiere, when the premiere happens, I watch it with you and there's like a chat, a chat area where you can, you know, chat back and forth. 
Um, let me know if you've experienced, I did one of those a long time ago. I don't remember whether the chat portion gets saved as comments or not, but let me know if you have experienced the premiere type of video and what you thought of it. I won't do this until mid-December, not until the holiday gift extravaganza is done. I do have to also spend some time, number one, gathering all my whips together. I have some of them here. Of course, the greater portion of them are in the storage unit, and I'm pretty sure they're all together. There might be one or two in a box somewhere. Um, but the hard part about this is when I put them in storage, I separated all the, the fabric, the stitching itself from out of the project bags and I laid them all flat in pillow shams and rolled them up into pillow shams so they would be um, you know kept nice and flat. So I have two pillow shams full of rolled up, rolled up projects, but I have to marry them all back up with their project bags and the charts. So, um, yeah, that, that will be, um, that will be a day long project <laughs> to give you an idea of how many whips I have, <laughs> but it'll be fun going through them, um, reminding myself just what I have. So yeah, look for that in mid December and let me know if you've done a premiere and what you think about that. Um, let's see. Let me show you, let me show you that. Nice. Let me skip to stitching first and then I'll show you what I was just thinking about. Um, so this weekend, I did not take the Star Center quilt with me. I just took um, the Prim Stitch Village and my um, La Vie Belle project. So here is the Prim Stitch Village the um there it is uh the center of this is um just this little flower so i have about half of it done i have to do two more of the red flowers and two more of the yellow flowers and that will be done and then of course the border it's kind of nice having this piece that's kind of all contiguous instead of a bunch of separate pieces so um yeah I think that will be done probably in about a week, if well, maybe four days. It'll be done soon. Then, La Vie est Belle. Let me move stuff around here. So this is one of the patterns that I got from the store on Etsy, Stitches Through the Heart. Now you'll remember that I said I loved her colors. This is one designer where I would not change any colors. I might have lied a little bit, but not too much. I tried to find colors that were the same as hers. And I succeeded, I think, with the gold and the blues. Of course, I did change the color of fabric because I wanted to use fabric that I had on hand. Um, I did not like what I had first chosen for the letters, so I changed that. I did not like what I had chosen for this line here, which is also the same as the um, bird. Let me show you a picture of that. So that is that. You can see the wording doesn't really stand out a whole lot anyway, so I'm okay with that. I went up to Stitches from the Heart. I mentioned I needed to get more of the floss that I ran out of for um, the Star Center quilt. So while I was there, I, I pulled the colors, the called for colors for the letters and this line here and the bird. I did not like what was called for for the letters. I think it was Muddy Puddle or something like that by, by Classic Color Works. It was too dark. It basically matched the fabric. This line is, so what I ended up with was Aged Pewter from, I believe it's Gentle Arts. This line here called for Brown Hen from Classic Color Works and that is what I'm using. The other colors, the gold is Heirloom Loom Gold by Gentle Arts, and then the blues are actually two Victorian motto blues. But I am, I'm 
really, really enjoying this stitch. So the last thing, stitch-wise, like I said, I did not take this with me over the weekend because I didn't want to have to deal with the frame. I didn't work on it Sunday when we came home because I was too tired, but I did pull it out again last night. So since you saw it last, like I said, I did get the blue that I needed to fill in those stars, so I did that. I did the pinwheels. I did these little triangles on each side coming down to finish the side borders. So what I have left to fill in are these two here, which are the same as these corner ones up here. And then down in the bottom, it's the same as the side borders. So I'll do that. And then this outer border here. I have a correction to fix on this one, um, and that'll be done. And I cannot tell you how much I love this. I do think that my fabric choice was perfect for this, for these colors. This happens to be the same fabric that I'm using for La Bille Belle. It is the 36 count mystery linen that I got from Vicki Clayton. So I am thinking that um, this may be the first thing that I get framed at Stitches from the Heart. I may take this right up there when I'm done and hang it right there because this that's the perfect space for this. It's going to be on command strips. One of the things that we've hesitated about hanging things, one of the reasons is because when you're out on the road, you know, things get jiggled around a lot. Um, so there's always the worry, you know, especially if I get glass in it, um, that it'll fall and break. And I don't know that I'm getting glass in it. I do tend to get museum glass in a lot of things, but um, because we got the trailer, we aren't going to be taking this out as much. Mike does say we need to take it out and exercise it a couple times a year so that the engine and the generator and everything gets run. Um, but it's not going to be out as much as it would be normally. So that is my current stitching stuff. I did get some time to knit or take some time to knit. Um, there was a couple times that I could feel my shoulder kind of complaining. So I stopped, but for the most part, um, yeah, it wasn't a problem. So this is the Wilson Ruana. It is a design by my friend um, Kitty B Knitting. It is, a, for those that might not know, a Ruana is kind of a cape-like -like thing, only it's not connected. So this is two front panels, and once I get the front panels done, then I will be connecting them and knitting down the back, basically. So I'm knitting both panels at the same time. The directions don't call for that, but I find it easier. This is a 12 row um, lace repeat, very simple, um, that gets repeated. The 12 rows get repeated 13 times. So I am about, well, I have seven repeats done. So I'm about halfway done. The color is called Zombie Prom. The yarn is Katadin by Miss Babs. Katadin is a huge skein of 1,750 yards. So you only need the one skein of it. But enjoying this. It's a fairly mindless knit. Um, once you get a feel for what's happening with the lace repeat. But it's not so boring that... I'm getting bored with it. So, yay, having fun with that. All right, so that is all my current, what I'm actually working on right now. Um, I want to show you my floss storage. So, as I mentioned on Thanksgiving, did I mention that on this go round of the video? Or Thanksgiving, the we will be spending some time in the storage unit looking for the DMC, but what I do have here in the rig is 
my Mrs. Satis floss, and all of my over-dyed floss. I did bring all of that with me. And I had shown you these bags a number of videos ago. These are packing cubes. Um, these were introduced to me by Carolyn Zook. I had never really heard of them before. And I found these ones that are the, oh, sorry, I just bumped you, are the perfect size. You know, I store my floss in the tux bags. This happens to be my Mrs. Satis floss. And these bags, or these storage cubes, thingies, stuff, are the perfect size for my floss tux bags. What I found though, is that they're very flimsy. And so I needed something to form a base. So I got foam core and cut it in the size of the bottom. And it's, it's perfect. It's just perfect. Now I did find if I wanted to put them on end like this, that the floss did have a tendency to kind of fall down. But using them like this, or of course flat, perfect. And then I can open up and just pull what I need, go through and find the colors that I need. So I have um, four of these now, one with my Mrs. Satis and three with all of my over-dyed flosses. I found that I can fit about 80 of my floss bags in there. <coughs> Depending on how stuffed, you know, the, these tux bags, I think I have some DMC colors that have like eight or 10 skeins stuffed in the bags. Um, but figure about 80, 75 to 80 to fill these. I think these would be a great alternative for those of you doing heaven and earth designs that maybe store your floss and these types of bags. Um, like I said, if it, you have 89, 90 colors, which is generally what their, their standard designs use, even if you can't fit them the whole way across, there is still some space up here at the top that you could lay some bags in as well. So I think it's gonna work, work, work really well. Now I, of course, do need a lot more for my DMC when I find it. <laughs> and of course, then we'll have to figure out, I, I want to find bins to, to kind of line them up in. I'll note with Sharpies on the bag, what the color range is, what the number range is, so I know, so I can just look at the bag and pull it out. Um, we will be storing this down in the basement. So one of the constraints, for those that don't know, in an RV like this, um, there's bins all along the bottom underneath the chassis or in the chassis of the of the rig. And um, Mike has a lot of stuff down there too, of course, but I do get some space down there to store various and sundry things. But we have to find bins that aren't too tall, you know, to fit in those spaces. So anyways, it's still a work in progress, but I am getting there. All right, let's see what else. Back to my notes. Um, okay, I think it's time for the store. Let's go shopping. Yay! I, I'm thrilled how much you guys like this segment because I love taking you along with me. I think this is so fun. I know, I know, there's some of you are laughing at me saying, well, um, you're buying all these new patterns, but you're doing no new starts. That's okay, they will wait for me. I am starting some, but the rest will wait for me. They're not going anywhere. Um, but it is fun to find new stores. So today's store is totally different from what I've shown you before. It is called Well Stitches. Um, and yeah, totally, totally different aesthetic. So I hope you enjoy it. I will see you back here in a minute. All right, so today we are going to look at this shop called Well Stitches. This person is in the Ukraine. You can see they've been on Etsy for quite a while, since 2016, almost 7,000 sales, 519 reviews, five stars. So this one has been around. She has a lot of patterns on here. And like I said, it's a very different aesthetic from what we have looked at um, the last couple videos. There are several things that I 
absolutely adore with her style and other things I'm just not so crazy about. So let's start looking through. Now, the first thing I notice first, animals, insects, and these are all cats. And she has several of these black cats. And my friend Lynn, Lynn is a stitcher. Lynn is a, oh, Lynn is a multi craftual genius, but she has a black cat. And I, every time I see these pictures of, <laughs> like this, I think of Lynn and her cat. She has, she has her, a couple cats, but the one is black. So anyways, I love, if you've been with me for a while, you know I love watercolor. And um, actually, I am going to halt this right here and try and get my camera a little bit further away so you can see the full screen. There, that is better. Okay, so I love watercolor and this designer, I'm going to actually go over here to the about first. Welcome to my shop. Here you can find cute and original things designed and made by me. All items made with love and care. So one thing I do make sure of when I'm, I'm looking for a video to share or a shop to share with you, I want to make sure as much as one can on the internet today that these are all original designs by this person. Um, for right now, eventually I might share other shops that are more like regular cross-stitch stores, but for right now I want to share, and I want to make sure they're not stealing designs, basically, because, you know, that does happen a lot. Anyway, this particular designer, um, does a lot of watercolor type things, and like, the heart with the water splashing, and please don't mind all the little notifications that may come down. I can't turn off my Wi-Fi or I won't be able to show you Etsy. I mean, these designs with the water, I think that is so clever and so unusual. And of course, anything with all the colors. I do love these kind of watercolor looks with um, the, the bright colored umbrella, although you do see them enough that they kind of have a tendency to feel cliche, I think, at this point. But this one I love. I think this is a, a very sweet one with the Eiffel Tower in the background. So she has a lot of the fruits that are kind of a watercolor feel. I love those. I think those would be awesome to do to hang up in a kitchen or a breakfast or nook type of thing. I don't have one of those. <laughs> I don't have walls. <laughs> I do have walls, just not enough to hang a bunch of things. And on a totally different feel are these ones with the branches, just very simplistic. So those hark back more to the to the French feel, right? Just very simplistic, just a couple of colors. Love that. And I love this silhouette with a splash of color. And look, there's another kitty. <laughs> I think that's so adorable. So yeah, if you have a dancer in your life, how gorgeous would that one be? Oh, so pretty. And then like this, this kind of silhouette outline of a cat. How simple, how clever. I love that. And again, these colors, the peace sign. I want to do them all because, of course, the colors just call to me. Look at that cat. Is that not awesome? Let me let me look at that closer. What an amazing design. I think that is just awesome. Mm. Full coverage, but not uh, but only half of it, right? <laughs> There's that guy again. And this one too. Look at that. Another ballerina. Most of her patterns are PDFs, and, you know, that's what I appreciate most about Etsy, I think, is that I can get them PDFs, and they are <laughs> instant gratification. Look how pretty these birds are. Isn't that gorgeous? And I don't know whether, like, this one is the same as this one. They both say PDF, so I don't really know what the difference is, or it's just a repetition of the same pattern. I love the bee. Again, the bee's kind of like, I don't know what, she calls it abstract watercolor. I just love the way it's kind of running, coming apart. <laughs> I don't think that's the right way to put it, but you know what I mean. The kind of speckles that make it, give it that watercolor look. 
jellyfish. Look at this heart. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, Lynn, there's Mocha. Look at that heart. So pretty. And look at this one with the bird in the, in the light bulb. I mean, splash of color over here. Just so clever. Oh, look at the raccoon. Look how cute. And again, the, the fruit with the watercolor splashes. I love that. Oh, look. This, the champagne glasses with the heart. Isn't that awesome? Wouldn't that be awesome for a wedding or anniversary? I love that. B is gorgeous. Look how pretty that is. So well done. The shading is so well done. I love that. Flamingo. And look at this one. Isn't that pretty? The cat, cat, uh, what do you call that? The side thingy <laughs> with the butterfly. And look at the wolf with the trees. How clever is that? Now, this is the kind of thing, this alphabet, the Winnie the Pooh alphabet, that I would say stay away from. That is licensed um, artwork that she should not be using. So, you know, you, you got to go into it with that in mind. Look at that cat one. So I have another friend that has a black cat. And when they got, got the cat as a kitten... She had her daughter name it, and they named it Vader. How awesome is that? <laughs> it's it's my friend who's the knitwear designer, the, the yarn dyer, Kitty Bee. Look at that cat. All the colors. I love that. Again, Thomas the Tank Engine, she should not be doing, because that is licensed artwork. But I love, oh, I love that peach. Look how pretty. The silhouettes are gorgeous, the outlines. Look at that coffee one. Simple, elegant. Love it, love it, love it. Yellow ballerina dress to go with the, uh, the red one that was up above. So pretty. Now this fruit, this is an orange. That's a little bit too deconstructed for my taste. But that turtle's fun. And the cat in front of the moon. Oh, there's a dog silhouette. I love that watercolor heart. That's gorgeous. So isn't that cool? Just kind of a different take on things. Look at the dolphin. Love it. Again, that's this plum one is a little bit too, too splattered. You want to maintain the integrity. The avocado is gorgeous, though. So, yeah, totally. And then you get to one like this, and look how totally different that one is from any of these other ones. you got to wonder if she had one design style and then changed somewhere along the way and that's from an older style or maybe that's a newer style but it's buried down a little bit so I bet you it's an older style there was I think I saw the other day a dandelion and I thought it was up towards the front oh this is what I wanted to show you so this is so clever I wish I had thought of this myself take the shape so here she has a shape of a butterfly. And then I'm sure this is probably a photo of a zinnia that she superimposed. And look how wonderful that works as a butterfly pattern. Isn't that cool? Like I said, I wish I had thought of that. <laughs> so many good ideas out there. Look at that tulip, isn't that beautiful? Of course, those are totally my colors, All right? Oh, gorgeous with the teals and the golds. That's perfect. Oh, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I may have to get that. It's only $3.39, right? 
part again, splashing pumpkin. Oh, look at the ballerina with the rose tutu. Isn't that cute? Look at the little pug. Is that a pug or a bulldog? I don't know my dogs. Isn't that cute? Gosh, that's a good one. There's one of the dandelions. That's not the one I was thinking of though. Beautiful, beautiful work. Seems to me she had a succulent that was watercolor too that I haven't seen yet. Another little skirt is, that's a rose. It's so pretty. That's a sweet one too with the birds in the birdhouse. That's really sweet. Oh wow, look at the palm tree with that kind of water splash look. That is cool. That would be cool to do with the dolphin. Mm -mm. No, that's Sasha. Make, oh, get back here, Sasha. Make the eyes a little greener. And that's Sasha. All right, that's another one I may have to get. <laughs> Sasha is a kitten. Although when he was a kitten, he had beautiful blue eyes. Of course. Oh, that's pretty with the ballerina one with the quote. Life isn't about waiting for the storm to pass. It's about learning to dance in the rain. Gorgeous. Still looking for that dandelion. <laughs> hmm, a palm tree with gray instead of blue. This heart's pretty too. She has a lot of patterns on here. And it's kind of interesting, these older ones, because as you go down, I think you do get to the older ones. You can tell she's really changed her style. Oh, a Scottish fold cat. Well, I don't know what happened to the dandelion. Maybe it wasn't this designer, but I thought it was. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed that one. Like I said, a little bit different. I saw a couple. Eh, that wasn't the right dandelion either. Saw a couple that I'd like. This is the dandelion. Look at that. Isn't that cool? All right, so... There's a, probably a couple of those that I will buy at some point here. Let me favorite that. Oh, I should have favorited those other ones. Oh, well, I, oh, there's the tool up. I'll go ahead and favor that there. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Again, well stitches. I will link them below. In the meantime, back to our regular video. I hope you enjoyed that. Isn't that cool? Lots of pretty patterns and not none of them all that huge, right? Just little smalls that you can do. Lots of color and lots of cute kitties. Yes, Sasha, there was one of you too. Of course, it didn't have, he has little white patches right here. It didn't have that. There's a hungry kitty prowling, but he will have to wait. Um, okay, so tips and tricks. Today, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about um, the back of your work. I had somebody ask, just how important is it to worry about the back of your work? Now I'm going to kind of talk about this in conjunction. If you have watched, if you watch, what if you aren't watching Jean Farish, I totally recommend it. I know I've mentioned her before. I will probably mention her again. She certainly doesn't have your typical floss tube. It's not like her videos are about showing all the things, but it is about sharing the love of needlework and educating all the things. Um, not the most recent video, but the one before that, not counting the the um, stitch along ones that she's doing in between. Um, she talked about the three different ways of making X's or the three main ways of making X's. The Danish way across and back, the English way from left to right, one stitch at a time, 
And another way that I didn't realize had a name, the Victorian way, which is one stitch at a time, right to left, where you are going, um, making your stitches horizontal you're, you're on the back. You're going horizontally along the back to make your X's. Anyways, watch her video to see that. But she, she not only shows you how to make it, but she shows you how they're different on the back. And this is kind of segues into what I want to talk about and my thoughts on it. Um, a lot of times we worry about what our back looks like and you see those lines straight up and down and think, oh, that's the way your back should look. That is only the way your back will look if all the time you stitch with the Danish method across and back. I would say that never ever in one project have I ever only stitched one way. There are times that I stitch across and back and not just because of variegated flosses. Of course, when I'm using variegated floss, I always stitch one stitch at a time, but I do one stitch at a time if I'm over here and I need to get over here. If I go out and back, then I have a longer place to carry my thread. I don't want to do that. I'll do one stitch at a time to get over there. Every once in a while, I'll do Victorian where I do the, the vertical along the top, or the, the horizontal bar on the back. But there's times I'll do, I'll stitch vertically. I'll stitch a row down. Um, I'll stitch diagonally. So on any given piece of mine, yes, you are going to see, let me put my glasses on so I can actually see. Let's get something that's a little bigger. So you are going to see, I can't get in too close, that yes, I do have a lot of places where it's straight lines. But there's also like here, I'm coming up diagonal on this stem. And so I have a diagonal kind of loopies going up here. I would challenge anybody to say you only use one method on an entire piece. It's just, it's just not possible, I don't think. So, yeah, we want to strive to keep our backs as neat as possible. We don't want them to get super lumpy, um, super uneven, mostly because that would make it more difficult to frame. But as with all things cross stitch, there's a bunch of best practices, but the only real rule is be consistent on how you cross your X's. Now, having said that, I will say that full coverage is a different beast. Ooh. I think we have a hawk going after a crow is what just flew by there. Interesting. Full coverage is a different beast. Full coverage, I still try to keep it so it doesn't get too lumpy on the back. And of course this, even within full coverage, so this is my farewell to anger. Even within full coverage, you have different, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Different results, I guess. This piece doesn't happen to be full of a ton of confetti in some places. In some places there are more. So that allows me to do more out and back. So you can see that there's places with lines, but you can also see there's a lot of places with a lot of thread being carried. Full coverage is such a different beast, so many different ways to do it, that I would say for the most part, those of us that do full coverage don't worry a whole lot about what our backs look like. I think you still wanna keep it so that you don't get too thick or too uneven. Um, but for the most part, it's not really a worry. Now I will say that um, my fractal 
it had so much confetti, so that means there was a lot more starting and stopping of threads um, that really created a lot more padding on the back in the stitches. That one was a lot harder to, um, to not get it too thick. There are some places on that that um, had some pretty thick places on the back. I don't think it's under glass. I don't think you can tell. Hold on. Talking. Um, looking at it, just in general, it's not something you'd be able to tell. But looking at it kind of off to the side, I can tell that there are some lumps, some unevenness. It's not enough that's going to detract from the overall beauty of this, but like, especially right in here, right in here, I can tell that it is bulging out a little bit. It's like I said, it's not something you can tell just in general, and it certainly doesn't distract from the amazing beauty of this piece. <laughs> God. All right, so that is my spiel on the backs. I hope that's helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions. Okay, glasses off. Um, now we are going to move on to, okay, let's do what I have kitted up for December, and then we'll move into stash and then giveaways. Oh, I forgot to pull the giveaways. All right, well, we'll take a break. Okay, so Let's save that for last. December, stitch all the Christmas, stitch all the winter. So winter is coming by stitches through the years. That's the one that had the blues and the grays and the browns. I did get some of the called for just looking at what I got. And I think, I think I got all the called for. So I, I love having my fabric stash again with me. Went through my fabric the other day and pulled out a bunch of different ones and did a floss toss. It was after I went to stitches through the year or stitches from the heart and got the floss that I needed. So this is the called for floss. And I got, I chose both light and dark fabrics. And this one, I think just seems to be perfect. I wanted to have it to have kind of a moody, dark feel to it. And I think that works. I don't know what this is. This was a gifted fabric. Um, it's a 36 count. So that is one new start for Christmas. Um, Paru Nuit Enchanté. That is from Couleur de Toile. That's that gorgeous one with the fox and the hare in the sleigh, right? The night scene. I am going to use, and that is done on, I believe it's anthracite um, Zweigert. I am doing it on Twilight by Weeks Dye Works. So this is the same fabric that I am using for the Winter Wonderland by Historische Werkmuster. And I actually think those two, I think that will be a good companion. Now, these are not the called for. Um, they are what I had that was close for the fox and the other, whatever the animals were. The majority of it is in B5200. I have probably three or four skeins of B5200 in my stash of DMC. <laughs> I am going to find it on Thanksgiving or die trying. I tell you what, I need that floss. So that is 36 count twilight weeks. Floss will be mostly the called for because most of it's B5200. Yes, if I can't find it, there is a, um, there's a Michael's Close. I'll run down there, but gosh darn it, when you know you have so much. All right, the, the My Fanny design, remember I could not decide which My Fanny design, and I'm not pulling, uh, 
I'll, I'll put a picture in here if I remember. Um, it's a hassle to pull my iPad over. You remember the pink house, right? So again, not using the called for, using what I found in my stash that was close. But the fabric. So this is from Mama Loves You GB. I had a giveaway, I believe it was for my 5,000 subscribers. And this was, her fabric was one of the giveaways. She was doing this marvelous marbling technique. This is a 28 count even weave. And so I think this is gonna be so fun for this design. So that it was that little pink house on the, on the cake tray, right? So again, the house is in B5200 with pink windows and a pink outline. All right. So, I am, instead of B5200, I have General Arts, um, I think this is Picnic Picket Fence. It has some gray in it, but I think that'll help make it stand out against this. The green for the tree. It has two reds. Oh, here's the pink. It has two reds, a lighter and a darker red. So that is those, and this is the brown for the trunk of the tree. So I think that'll work. Um, I pulled out the, um, this is the <coughs> DMC Etoile Blanc. So the one that has the, the sparkle in it. Um, I think I'm gonna use that for the snowflakes. And, um, if you remember there is a snowflake like on the top of the house that on like it, it went from the roof down to the front of the house and on the roof it was white and on the front of the house it was silver I'm going to see if I can find the, some if the stitches from the heart carries the DMC diamond um, to see how that works since it's new I'd like to give that a try um, so yeah that is my plan for that one. All right, so those are my new starts for Christmas, winter, and then I will have the whips as well. I don't have a feel yet for how I'm going to rotate through them. The natives are getting restless. Um, and then for my New Year's Eve starts. So Scarlet House, you remember we're starting Scarlet House. This is supposed to be a New Year's Day, but no new starts. Jan says she's gonna start hers on New Year's Eve. If you remember, I did get the fabric from Stitches from the Heart. This is a 46 count. I don't remember the color name. I started to pull the silks yesterday from what I had that seemed equivalent. Um, there are some that I'm going to have to get. No, 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 Nina. Down. There are some that I'm going to have to get from Stitches from the Heart. It is rather disconcerting. Of course, the picture on the front never does it justice, right? Um, but I looked at, if you remember, I had this, and the reason I decided I wanted to do this is because of the model at Stitches from the Heart. So I pulled up that video and looked at the colors in the video. And they're pretty darn similar to what's showing on the picture on the front. Limestone in particular, if you remember, that's what I was using in, um, in the Star Center. I'm gonna see if I can find a good representation of it. So for these, these diamonds here, the dark color is limestone. For this outer border, the dark color is limestone. It is a lot, lot darker. It is what's used in this house. And look how gray that is compared to the dark. 
So I'm going to, I'm going to go to stitches from the heart and look at the called for compare it to what I've pulled. Um, and see, see what I want to use and also what's going to work for this fabric. Now, speaking of going to stitches from the heart, I'm meeting Leslie Hurley there. She's coming down here. She is a friend that lives here in San Antonio. Um, she's coming down this weekend and we're going to get together hopefully on Saturday at Stitches from the Heart. So I'm really looking forward to that. I love Leslie. All right. The other thing I'm starting on New Year's Eve is um, Flowers Feed the Soul from Stitches Through the Years. So again, I pulled out some fabric. This is um, again a 36 count, I believe. Um, I thought I had the label here for it, but it seems to have disappeared. I did buy, again, from Stitches from the Heart, I did buy the DMC for this. And so that will be another new start for me on Christmas Eve. And I love the soft colors. I think this is going to be gorgeous. So those are plans. Now, Mike will be coming home soon. He is just leaving work early today. Um, so expect an interruption here in the not too distant future because I have <coughs> still to go through all the stuff I got. All right, let me put this over right. here. This may get a little chaotic because I have some PDFs to show you as well as stuff right here in front of me. So, Fat Quarter Shop. One of the things that I got was the floss they got in the Week's Dye Works floss for um, Serendipity, which is going to be their stitch along in 2021, their charity stitch along. And yes, this is one of my new starts that I will be doing in 2021. Everything else will be no new starts, but this is one that I've committed to with Fat Quarter Shop. Um, so this is the equivalent of Bloomtopia from last year. This is this year's Serendipity. I'll have a little bit more on that later. I also got these ribbon trims um, or lace trims. I love lace for trims and I don't have any. So that came home with me. It didn't come home with me. It was mailed to me. I'm still getting things um, for our holiday gift extravaganza. And I got from my dear friend Maria, this project bag. It also has a little floss keeper thingy in it. It has these wonderful Christmas flamingos. How cute is that? So that's gonna be one of our giveaways. In the same package, she sent me, oops. This is gorgeous. She made this for me. So she said, this is leftover fabric from all of the fabric, all of the project bags she's made during the pandemic. She does have a business. She does have a website. Um, her little tag was on here. Look at the acorn zipper pull, or not acorn, thimble. Look how pretty that is. And it has a nice weight to it, so it's easy to find. Um, where I saw a tag of hers. Oh, here it is on this one. Her website, she has a website. She doesn't have a whole lot on there yet. But Mystic Mountain, Miss, Mystic Meadow Creations.com is her website. So that is for the giveaway. This, I mean, it's just gorgeous. So yeah, leftover fabrics from, um, all the project she, bags she made during the pandemic for different customers. And then a matching floss minder book. It is closed with a button. She does beautiful work. So she included a little floss ring there there's a little pocket here for me to put my floss bags in, my tux bags. And then a zipper back here, a zipper pocket back here. So that, oh, that's gorgeous. Oh. She also included, she's making bigger floss minders. So 
So she included one of those with blue bonnets, Texas blue bonnets. Welcome to Texas Jam. And then she knows I like tux bags. And I appreciate these so much, Maria, because I am running out. She works at the Stitch Niche in Arlington. So that's where that's from. So that was one of the goodies. Here's a picture. This will be a giveaway, not till after um, after the holiday gift extravaganza. Or maybe I'll include it in that. Who knows? Who knows? All right. I got my October threads of the month from Coloring Cotton. I haven't even opened these. I have to say this will be the last of these that I'm getting, um, kind of my own fault. I have the payment for these being pulled from my PayPal account and my PayPal account was empty <laughs> when they went to pull the next amount. Um, so I just decided, you know, something I don't think I'm going to worry about renewing. This was after, this came in after I spent time organizing my floss in these new bags. I was like, I don't need any more floss. But this is their October set, Cranberry, Aztec, Lemongrass, Dusty Blue, and Witch's Brew. That's showing a lot brighter. It's actually a much more dusky purple. So, those are gorgeous though. I also got the next, um, I think this is, this is um, variegated number three from Vicki Clayton. I haven't opened these up yet. So we are still on the rub series. We have rubbed gold, gray, hair, H-A-R-E, grasses, and lavender over here. And on the other side, we have rubbed bronze, jade, gray, blue, indigo, and golden apple. So those are gorgeous. Then I also got from her, I mentioned to you last week that she had created the set or recreated the set for Midnight in a Garden. And I got that set. So that is these beautiful purples, dark, rich, gorgeous colors. Now, I had also said that um, I knew where my patterns were in the storage unit. I went over to check them out to see if I could find this pattern. It wasn't the bin with the patterns. It was a bin with all my project bags with my knitting whips. Yes, I have a whole big bin of project bags with knitting whips as well. <laughs> but that means I don't know where my patterns are. So, Thanksgiving. <laughs> Wish me luck. All right, next. I got from Fat Quarter Shop a new DMC color card. So like Mike said, just get the new one. So I did. So Chris, I can send you back the one you lent me. Thank you for that. It has been invaluable. But I'm thrilled to have my own again. And yes, I know now I will find the one in the storage unit. Okay, Mike is home now. So I am going to wait till he comes in. He's out there talking to himself. He always talks to himself. <laughs> He carries on whole conversations with himself. Oops, I need to go unlock. Okay, so the next thing I have to show you is a ton of patterns. So Sue, I, th I think I mentioned this, Sue Chimino um, had a store and she had all the patterns from her store that she was getting rid of. And she'd had them up for a while and decided to just put a bunch at either a dollar or $3. You know, one of the things with having um, not stitched for a while, I always feel like I've missed a lot. And so seeing these kind of sales kind of helps me get some stuff that I really like. 
So let me go through these. Fragments in time, Summer House Stitchworks. So you know I'm doing the current, for those that have been around a while, that I'm current working on the 2020 Fragments in Time, but I've always loved the other ones. Um, so I got another one of those. I have, I have like a couple from like last year and the year before, but I don't know which ones. <laughs> so I need to, I need to update my, my X stitch app with that. GW Fairy Farm 1738, just a sweet little band sampler. And I think this is the one in Fredericksburg that I've been to, or been by, I guess, a lot. So, Spring at Bean Family Farm by Shakespeare's Peddler. I love all the little motifs in this one. <laughs> Am I gonna have to edit out some more? Pee quietly. <laughs> So there's that one. Erica Michaels, Delight, Little Bits of Wisdom, her Petites Collection, Teach Us Delight and Simple Things. I love her petite ones. I have a couple of them. Little by Little and Nature Sing. I just video bombed you. <laughs> Don't you have to go back to work? And now you have Sasha's button video. What? So you put Sasha's butt in the oh, video? Put in there. Oh, I forgot to close that door. I don't know whether they can see in there or not. Little by little, and nature sang. Another Summer House Stitchworks sonnet. So this one, I'm not thrilled with the colors. I love the wonkiness of the flower. Um, the vase is gorgeous. I'm not thrilled with the colors, but you know me, I can change that. Another Summer House Stitchworks. Oh, this is a whole set that I'm still missing one. So Summer House Stitchworks did these seasonal gardens. So this is spring. Winter, love the colors on this one. The spring one's a little bit too <laughs> springy for me. <laughs> Purple isn't my favorite, so I, I might change that. We'll see. Winter and autumn, love autumn. So the one I don't have that I wasn't able to get is summer. A Jeanette Douglas one on summer, so she has these for all seasons so i may see what i can do about getting the other ones of these hearts content marine appleton i love marine appleton this is called flower of life this is all done over one and you know i i fell in love marine fell in love with marine appleton way 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 back when and even way, way, way back then, I loved stitching over one. I loved the detail that it gives. This one is kind of a specialty stitch one. It's called Summer Sizzle, Sizzler, Sizzle Sampler. Again, I am not thrilled with the colors on that, but those can be changed. And then a whole series. So this is The Flock by Samsara Designs. It is a set of 12. So do you see this down here? That's what it will look like. Of course, this is the non-colored version. That's what the total design looks like. And it says, Faith is the bird that feels the light when dawn is still dark. I love that. Love that saying. So I have one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, and eight. So I need the, the last four. I did look on the Sam Sarah site before um, I purchased these to make sure that I could still get them and they are still available. So that is good news. All right, and last but not least, um, Fat Quarter Shop is starting to send out to those of us that are going to be doing it, the um, serendipity stuff. So this is the project bag. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, needle minder and key ring and i do have two more of these sets the project bag and the key rings and the needle minder to give away um i haven't decided yet whether i'm going to include those in the holiday gift extravaganza or wait until january for those so that is that all right, I am going to pause this video and do the um, do the giveaways. Okay, so one more thing to show you and then the winners. I forgot this one, where Liberty dwells. So again, this is gonna be another new start in 2021. Don't all of you people yell at me for no new starts 2021, because this is gonna be an inauguration day start. Where Liberty dwells, there is my country. So, got that one from Stitches from the Heart. Now, winners, yay. Okay, so we have two homes to give away, two homegrown. The first one is Becky's Madness for Crafting. Her comment is, yes, please do a whip parade. I just found your channel and I'm loving it. Gonna start from the beginning now. You poor thing. Get get ready. Hold on tight. It, it's kind of a crazy ride. I had some kindness today. My husband put up our Christmas tree while I was at work. How sweet is that? I love my home. It's nice and peaceful. I would stitch the snowflake in the colors that are called for. So Becky's Madness for Crafting, you win one of these. And Shannon Thomas, who says, my favorite thing about my home is who I share it with, my hubby and my puppies. You win the other one. So ladies, I will be commenting on your comment with my email address so you can email me your mailing address. Snowflake, two of these to give away. The first goes to Drexen Daniela. The Star Center quilt looks stunning. This week's kindness was an iPhone 11 from my boss. That's awesome. I would stitch the snowflake in blue. What I love about my home is that there is my mom there because I live in a different city in a rented apartment and sometimes it's difficult. That's awesome. Teresa Libby is the second winner of the Star Flake one and she says, I would love to see a whip parade. I would make the snowflake blue. I love the shops you showed. Thank you for brightening my day with your video. It is so helpful during these times of isolation. You are very welcome, Teresa. I'm glad you're here. And then last but not least, kindness. This is the fourth part in the Prim Stitch series, and this goes to Vicki Benio. Always yes to a whip parade. See, what I tell you, you guys love the whip parade. I would stitch the snowflake in pinks with some, some etoile thrown in. I, I love that idea. My four and six year old grands showed me their kindness every time I used the stairs in their house that I fell down and broke, broke my foot two years ago. They rush to hold my hand so it doesn't happen again. I think they're scarred for life. <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> All right, guys, that is it, except for our angel card. Today's angel card says, don't rely on other people to inspire you and motivate you. You have to want it enough to make it happen yourself. And on a personal note, I will say, this is speaking to me about our son, Ben. He has decided to quit. It's a part-time job at a restaurant, but it is it at least is bringing in a steady income. He's decided to quit and do his art full-time. 
And while I am all in with him following his dream and going for it, I just hope he has enough money to pay the bills. <laughs> the practical side of me says. So anyways, don't rely on other people to inspire you and motivate you. You have to want it enough to make it happen yourself. I'm sure this talks to one of you out there as well. Know that I am cheering you on. Know that I am always here if you want to talk. Know that I love you. I'm wishing all of my American friends a happy Thanksgiving. And I will see you again on Friday for the start of our holiday gift extravaganza. Until then, take care and I will talk to you soon.